and there I have it and that in itself would be a pretty good watermark and we could leave it just as it is and we could use it that way but like I told you earlier I like to put a little interest in it make it a little fancier a little creative because we are creative types after all um, and I could use this image that I had opened up earlier and by going to select all and then grabbing it with my select tool I could drag it and drop it right into my picture and I could use that. Now, you notice it's black. We want it white. That's very easy to rectify. We just go down, make sure white is chosen, pick up our paint bucket tool, and drop the white right in there, and there it is, and it's white. And now if we go back to our select tool again, we can move it around, we can resize it, um, we can do whatever we want with that. But I'm going to get rid of that because I want to use a different one. So I'm just going to hit delete while it's selected. It's going to ask me if I want to delete layer 3. That's the layer 3, so I say yes. And then instead I'm going to go down here to my objects that are included with my paint shop. And I like this one right here. I'm going to just grab it by holding down the, the mouse button and drop it right into my picture or into my watermark and there you have it and because my white was already selected it already made it white even though it looked like it was going to be black over in my selection window there so now I size it however I want it I can even make it skinnier and fatter and you know just really customize it to how I want it and that looks about right and that looks like about the right position and don't worry that it's on top of my words we're gonna fix that so now we come over here to our layers and you see we have shape one which is the flowers and leaves that we just put into there we have my copyright information and we have my signature line I'm gonna drag this down to below my signature line now it still doesn't look like it's necessarily behind my words but that's okay it's going to when we finish with it now we don't obviously want these to look white when we drag them into our picture we want them to look a little more transparent so but to do that we change the opacity which is right here and you have if you click this arrow you get a little slider bar now for my picture for the image I, w I go way down to about 20 to start with and that looks pretty good and you can see when I do that what it does it lightens that and right now it looks like a very light lavender because it's on that purple but we're going to get rid of the purple and it's just going to be a very very light white so select that layer again and we want to add a couple of other um, effects to it so we're going to choose bevels I like this simple bevel right here it's called simple inner you click on that and click apply and you can see what it did it sort of gave it a 3D effect so but I want to also add a shadow to it so in my drop down menu I go to drop shadows I choose just this really simple shadow hit apply and now I have a shadow and it gives it a real th 3D effect well I want to do the same thing to my wording I want to make it dress it up a little bit so I'm going to go to the wording I'm not going to shadow those I think it makes them harder to read but I am going to bevel them with the same simple inner bevel and you can see what that does and I'm going to do the same thing to this other layer and it makes it look almost embossed and that's the effect we're going for but we still need to lower the opacity on the words now for the words I generally start with about 50 and you can see what that's going to do here I'm going to lower those down to both to 50 and you can see that it lightens them considerably now if we go over to the purple layer and we click on this eye it's gonna hide that from us and you're gonna see how hard that would have been to work with without that purple so let's click that back on so we can still see what we're doing now like I said we've got a lot of extra room that we don't need a lot of extra extra canvas area so we're gonna crop that with this with this marquee tool which I picked up right here and we're going to just put our outline around it when we have it where we want it we're going to go to image and crop and it cuts it just where we told it to now see the little flashing or scrolling dotted line around it until you get rid of that none of your other tools are going to work and when I first started working with Photoshop I got extremely frustrated because I could never figure out how to get rid of that well here's a great little tip press control and D for deselect 
and it goes away. And there you have your watermark. I think that looks really good. So what we want to do now is we want to go back over and like I said we do not want the purple layer to go into our photo but we do want these first three layers. So we're going to click on one, hold down the shift key and click the bottom one and it highlights all three of those. Then we go down to the chain link here, click on that and you can see it links all three of those. So now if I go back over here with my selection tool everything moves around as a group. All three of those layers are now grouped together. Wouldn't that be great if we had that in Design Studio? But now we can move those as a group. So now that we've done that, we're ready to save this. Now you can at this point completely delete layer the layer two, which is the purple layer, if you want to. Um, I usually leave it just because I like to be able to see it when I open it up. So now what we want to do is we want to save this so that we can use it for every other photo that we do from now on. So we go to File and do Save As because you want this to open up so that you have some choices of the type that you want to use. Use the Photoshop format and the reason for that is if you use another format it's essentially going to take all three of those layers and flatten them as one so that they're no longer separate and you can't edit them. So we want to keep this in PSD format, which you can see here, it's named it Watermark PSD. And that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to um, save that right now to my desktop. And I have that already on my desktop because I did a practice one earlier, and it's asking me if I want to replace it. And I'm going to say yes, because I want to save this new one. So there is my watermark, and now it's ready to use. Let me show you how to do that. 